Hello and welcome to House Building Digest series number three, which is on procedures and uh, terminologies. My name is Dr. Shailesh Kumar Agarwal, Executive Director of BMTPC, and this is an attempt by which BMTPC uh, will provide useful but often ignored information about multifarious activities involved in house construction and other technical and non-technical matters associated with building materials and construction technologies. Every individual has a dream of owning a house and through this house building digest series, we will slowly unravel myths and misconceptions about building construction. The language used here is uh, lucid and simple to comprehend. This series is divided into two parts. First, we will explain you about the procedures and documents required for obtaining building approval for construction, which is a must for house construction and shall not be ignored. Second would be on various terminologies used in house construction. Once the owner has a encumbrance free land, he or she has to see necessary approvals and sanctions for building a house from competent authority. Generally, central government or state government notifies a urban local body or development authority or any other institution or organization to give permits or approvals for construction of house. These bodies in turn frame building bylaws and notify them. The house construction needs to be done within the framework of these building bylaws. What is building bylaws? The, uh, they are basically meant to regulate coverage of your house, height of building, architectural and engineering design. The bylaws also incorporate the provisions for protecting the house against hazards like earthquake, fire, noise, structural failure, etc. It is recommended that building bylaws need to be followed in letter and spirit and are easily accessible through websites of uh, these bodies. Next comes what are the steps required for taking building approval. At the first instance, the owner has to notify to the concerned authority that he or she intends to undertake house construction within its jurisdiction. This notification is to be given on a standard form along with number of documents such as plans, certificates, etc. Normal, normally several copies of plans are required to be submitted and therefore it is advisable to make extra copies. Plans generally required for submission include location plan, site plan, building plan, services plan, that is water supply and sanitation and electric, electrical plan, specifications, estimates, ownership title. Uh, first, let me define key plan. A typical key plan showing the boundaries and location of the site with respect to neighborhood landmarks is known as key plan. And this is a must for identification of the land on which owner is constructing a house. Next comes building plan and typical floor plan is shown on the right hand side of this slide. The building plans which need to be submitted are typical floor plans, sections and elevations together with covered area clearly indicating sizes and spacing of all structural members, size of rooms, their position and width of staircases, etc. The sectional drawings indicate various heights of buildings and rooms and also height of parapet, drainage and slope of the roof. The sectional drawings also show clearly sizes of footings, thickness of basement wall, if any, wall construction, floor slab and roof slab. The elevation and terrace plan indicating drainage and slope of the roof slab form uh, the part of building plan. Having explained building plan, the application for building permit is to be submitted along with these building plans, which 
I just explained to you along with site plans, key plans, construction specifications, estimates, along with documents pertaining to ownership and any other document or certificate deemed appropriate by the authority. All the documents need to be signed by not only owner as well as by the architect or professional as defined by the authority. Building fees are prescribed by the authority which are to be deposited along with the application form. After due diligence, the authority issues the building certificate which is valid for a specific period of time. Normally, it is uh, three years but may be defined by the authority. Once the building certificate is received, the on owner is required to give notice in a standard form to the authority for commencement of building work at site. During the house construction, please remember the authority may carry out inspection of building works at different stages of construction and owner has to keep the authority informed about it as per building bylaws. Once the construction is completed, owner has to submit a notice of completion to the authority. The designated authority will then carry out inspection on a specified date to ascertain whether the work has been carried out as per the document submitted by the owner uh, at the time of taking building permit and will issue the completion certificate. It is owner's responsibility for carrying out the work as per applicable bylaws. There are other issues as well related with services of qualified professionals like architect and engineers. The qualification of such professionals are generally notified by the authority. The detailed procedures to be followed are contained in building bylaws and therefore building bylaws are the most important and only document to be followed by the owners for undertaking housing construction. This completes the first part of procedures. Now let us discuss different terminologies commonly used in house construction. These are quite common terms and defined in variety of ways by different authorities and vary from local uh, place to place. However, we are explaining them to all of you for a guidance purpose. Owner. An owner is a person or a body having a legal interest in land or building thereon. Dwelling unit or house can be said to be an independent housing unit with separate facilities for living and cooking and sanitary requirements. Setback line is the most important boundary which is parallel to the plot boundary and laid out in each case by the authority beyond which nothing can be constructed and is known as setback line. Building permission or permit is a written and valid permission given by the authority for carrying out construction or development. Basement, if any, is the lower story of building below or partly below the ground level. Plinth is the portion of your structure or building between the surface of the surrounding ground and the surface of the floor immediately above the ground. Plinth area or built up area is quite important term and it is the built up covered area measured at the floor level of the base of any story. Covered area is also very important and is defined as the ground area covered by the building immediately above the plinth level. FAR or floor area ratio is defined as the ratio of total covered area that is the plinth area of all the floors divided by area of the plot. Carpet area is the area of usable rooms at any floor level excluding the area of walls. Next is super built up area which is used by uh, builders and uh, developers. This term is being used nowadays by builders and developers for selling the flat. There is no specific definition for this. However, it is defined as the plinth area or built up area plus proportionate area of common areas such as lobby, 
lift shafts, staircases, etc. In a society, generally the plinth area along with share of all common areas proportionately divided amongst all dwelling owners usually makes up the super built up area. It may include sometimes common areas such as swimming pool, garden, clubhouse, etc. The owners are advised to know about the carpet area or plinth area of the dwelling unit they are going to purchase and should not use super build up area as yard district. There are other civil engineering terms such as foundation, footing, floor, habitable, rooms, uh, WC, superstructure, room height, which are defined through these uh, slides. Foundation is the part of building structure, which is in direct contact with ground, uh, which transmits the load over it. Footing uh, is the foundation unit under the base of the wall or a column for the purpose of distributing the load over a large area. DPC or dam proofing course is a course consisting of appropriate waterproofing material provided to prevent penetration of dampness or moisture normally provided at the plinth level. Floor is the lower surface in a story on which one normally walks in a building and does not include a mezzanine floor. What is habitable room? A room occupied or designed for occupancy for human habitation and incidental uses, but excluding kitchen, bathroom, water closet compartment, laundry, serving and storing, pantry, corridor, cellar, attic, storeroom, puja room and spaces not frequently used. WC or water closet is a privy with an arrangement for flushing the pan with water, not including a bathroom. Superstructure is the portion of building constructed above the plinth at ground level. Room height is the vertical distance measured from the finished floor surface to the finished ceiling surface. These, there are some other most commonly used material terms which are concrete and reinforced cement concrete. Concrete is nothing but a mixture of cement, sand and coarse aggregate or budgery mixed with water to form the construction material used at the base of the foundation, etc. RCC or reinforcement concrete is the concrete along with the steel reinforcement normally in the shape of uh, reinforcement uh, bars or round bars or steel bars used for construction of columns, slabs, beams, etc. in a house. Specifications form the integral part of house construction and relate to description of materials along with their properties to be used in construction of various elements of the house that is foundations, slabs, floors, walls, roofs, etc. Dimension like depth of foundation, thickness of walls, roofs, floors, parapets also form part of specifications. Protective treatments required for rain, termites, measures to be taken for making house safe against earthquakes, wind, uh, flow, uh, floods, and measures for fire uh, protection also form the part of specifications. Based on detailed specification, the estimates are to be work out, worked out. Normally, estimates are prepared in two parts, one bringing out details of quantities involved and other bringing out the abstract of cost. Normally, the rate of construction are based on published rate of schedule being brought out by housing and development authorities or agencies from time to time. This slide shows CPWD schedule of rate, which can be downloaded online and available for purchase as well. It is also pertinent to mention here that estimate for electricity, water supply and sanitary, which are known as services, are made separately from the main building estimate and are added together to bring out complete cost. At last, the terms and terminologies defined here will serve as a reference guide to the people who are venturing to build their house at their own uh, and has no legal bearing. The exact interpretations of procedures and terminologies shall have to be extracted from the local building bylaws as applicable. Before signing off, I leave you with the typical cross section of house uh, across wall. What you see here from bottom to top are various building elements. Let me explain uh, them to you. Below ground level is called superstructure and above ground level is called 
superstructure as you can see substructure has base concrete over which we have a footing over which we have a plinth and dam proofing course superstructure comprises of walls then doors windows then you have floors then you have lintel you have sill you have roof and parapet i hope the building digest number 3 will be helpful for creating awareness about construction of a house and can be downloaded from www.bmtpc.org the next house building digest series uh, will cover construction specifications used for foundation thank you